The Unshackled Waves, episode 265. Broadcasting from Melbourne, Australia, this is The Unshackled Waves with Tim Wills. Brought to you by theunshackled.net. Hello everyone, welcome to another Waves episode. Hong Kong, the special administrative region of the People's Republic of China, has seen 13 consecutive weeks of protests to preserve the region's democracy and civil rights. These protests were set off by opposition to a proposed extradition bill, which had the potential to see residents of Hong Kong face the mainland Chinese government legal system. Uh, last week, uh, the chief executive of Hong Kong, Carrie Lam, announced she was withdrawing the extradition bill after initially stating that it would only be delayed. Hong Kong, since its transfer to the People's Republic of China by the British in 1997, when their lease on the region expired, has been governed by the one country, two systems constitutional principle. This means that Hong Kong was able to keep its British system of government and law until 2047. But of course, the People's Republic of China, governed by the Chinese Communist Party, has a one China policy, which states that all ethnically Chinese territories shall be under the jurisdiction of the one Chinese government. Chinese tanks were spotted outside Hong Kong as the protests continued. The local police began to become more aggressive in their response to protests with arrests and intimidation. It is still a very unpredictable and volatile situation. The eyes of the world have been on Hong Kong and how an increasingly aggressive and assertive Chinese Communist Party government would respond. Tiananmen Square 2 looked to be off the table, though their goal was still uh, to maintain order and authority uh, in the region. The Hong Kong China dispute has spilled over into Australian cities, not just because of our high Chinese immigrant population, but because of the activities and espionage of the Chinese Communist Party they engage in Australia. Pro Hong Kong protests have been flooded by pro China activists. As a result, some pro Hong Kong protesters in Australia are wearing face masks to hide their identity from the Chinese authorities. It is concerning that we are supposed to all be Australians, yet we are increasingly seeing another state, a totalitarian one, infiltrate our population and politics. Last month, Liberal backbencher Andrew Hastie wrote an op-ed in the Fairfax newspapers outlining why China's global ambitions threaten Australia's future. It spooked a lot of his fellow MPs from both sides of politics, but we have seen our politicians come under the influence of the Chinese Communist Party's agents, normally businessmen in recent times. The most famous case was, of course, Labor Senator Sam Dastyari. His New South Wales Labor Party was exposed at the independent Commission Against Corruption of accepting an illegal $100,000 donation from uh, Chinese businessman Hung Guangimo, who has been banned from re-entering Australia. The ABC has also revealed that the two Chinese Australian candidates for the inner Melbourne seat of Chisholm at the just past federal election, the Liberals Gladys Liu, the now elected MP for the seat, and her Labour opponent uh, Jennifer Yang were both members of Chinese associations that upon investigation ultimately had links to the Chinese government. Australia really is in the middle of a shit sandwich as we are dependent on China significantly when it comes to trade. Our leaders have kicked the can down the road with China but are slow getting their heads out of the sand. They know that something must be done, but they have no idea what. To gain a greater understanding of how deep the Chinese Communist Party influence is in Australia, plus the various human rights abuses that they are committing on their own people, is Shan Ju Lin. Shan Ju Lin was born in Taiwan, which is officially called the Republic of China. The island is one that the People's Republic of China would like to incorporate under its rule. She ran in the recent Queensland state election in 2017 as an independent candidate for the seat of Bandamoa in her town of Ipswich. She polled approximately 5% of the vote, which is a decent effort for a first-time independent candidate. She's known throughout her area for holding the annual World Harmony Day. She's been on the show before, and given her unique insight, I thought she would be the perfect person to talk to to discuss the recent China crisis in Australia. Sean, welcome back to the show. Oh, hi, team. Thank you for having me again. Now, you were born and grew up in Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party wishes for the nation to be under its rule. Obviously, they consider all ethnically Chinese people part 
of their rule. So my first question is, obviously because you're very outspoken on social media against the Chinese Communist Party and being a Chinese ethnically person, has that been enough uh, to make you a person of interest to them? Have you noticed anything? Uh, first of all, I need to correct what you say. I'm a Chinese person. I'm not a Chinese person. Of course, I'm Australian, but I'm definitely not a Chinese. <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah. you consider yourself Taiwanese, not Chinese? Not Chinese. So as so many Taiwanese people don't think they are Chinese. Though my question still stands, is the, the Chinese Communist Party, do you feel that they... I uh, want to, to monitor you here in Australia. That's my question. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, now, even now, I receive uh, five or six calls from China, from, you know, from a phone call. It's, it's, I think it's from the Chinese government. Yeah, every day. They're monitoring where I go, what I say, what am I doing? You know. Surveillance is one thing, but has there ever been, you felt actually any physical intimidation? Because there's been cases where they've broken into houses and, and ruffled up things. Is that, has anything like that happened to I you? Don't think it, I don't think that would do that extent in Australia, really. I think they're just more spying. They try to get information, that's all they want. Now, obviously, the People's Republic of China, it's the biggest authoritarian government we have ever seen, and modern technology has seen it able to mm. become a real-life uh, big brother state. So this means it's been able to uh, rewrite its own history through internet censorship and, and control what news is reported. They've also got their social credit system where mm -hmm. it encourages uh, Chinese people to uh, have good societal and citizenship habits, but there's heaps of human rights abuses that they're doing a better job in in covering up and, or I shouldn't just say human rights abuses, I'd say atrocities. Mm -hmm. Can you expose to the audience just what, what exactly is happening right in front of our eyes? I can just tell you what I heard from, read from the media, from, heard from other people. I haven't really been to China, so, you know, but there's a lot of report about it, you know, like they persecuting religious people with religious belief. Also, they're very against people with democratic mind, like Hong Kong. Now, they, they public, publicly asking for democracy. Right? They want to have their own leader. They want to elect their own leader. That's not allowed in, in China. So they basically have no, uh, there's no democracy at all in China. It's very bad. Even like Chinese people or Chinese students, whatever they say, whatever they do, they're still monitored. I'm not Chinese, so of course they monitor me, but it, this, for Chinese people, it's different, different extent. You know, they will threat their family in China if they do, if they do say something, you know, opens, critic, criticize the Chinese government. Back, I mean, their family back in China will all suffer from what the person do in overseas, you know, from, from what their uh, they, um, family member do in overseas. It's very chilling that yeah. you, even, even though you might be free in the West, if you've got relatives in, in China, mm -hmm. then the, the Chinese Communist Party can use them uh, as hostages. And of course, mm, there's... Yeah. I recall when I was younger, there was a huge free Tibet uh, movement, uh, which was mm -hmm. popular in, in Hollywood, like people like uh, Richard Gere, and obviously the Dalai Lama is the Tibetan leader in, in exile, and there was a brutal crackdown in 1989 in uh, Tibet, but uh, these days it's, it's not talked about, and it, it was actually reported that uh, because of the Hong Kong uh, protest that there's been a further crackdown in uh, Tibet. Ah, oh, 
further crack down. No, that 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 further crack down. They they haven't been. It's just said this way. They've never been stopped persecuting their own people for the last you know how many years? More than sixty years of regime. They have never stopped killing their own people. There's more than eighteen million people in it. 18, more than 18 million innocent Chinese people died during their power, when they come in power. Yeah, and it's, it's a huge number because China is such a, a large populated country, but they're, they're all people. Yeah, so they never stop, I just say, not, not be, yeah, they, they just never stop killing their own people. And... Uh, the the method of killing the way they're killing it is it's getting more and more evil you know like now they organ harvesting the people before we can only hear or oh, they're organ harvesting Falun Gong practitioners now they're organ harvesting Christians and Tibetans and all different minority all different you know whoever they want to destroy you mentioned Falun Gong. They're a well. They were well, they not a, a, a certain ethnic group. They're a, a movement in, in China. It's not actually a movement. It's just an exercising group. You know, they practice it. They practice. They meditate. They practice meditation and they study Buddha law to try to become a good person. Try to read up all the bad thought and just you know. For their own own benefits, own health benefits, and because it works for many people, so there's about 100 million people practicing Falun Gong, and so it's more than the, their members are. They, they actually don't have a membership. It's more and more people, about 100 million people, are practicing Falun Gong. So the the Zhang Zemin is scared of you know they're actually more than Communist Party members. So they they're afraid to lose their power to Falun Gong people, but I mean, Falun Gong practitioners they don't even want to involve with their politics. So it's just their own, you know, it's just jealousy, jealous plus fear, their own fear, the CCP. So they they just persecuting people out from nothing. Yeah, they've never been a, a political or gotten political, but uh, because Falun Gong uh, practitioners have too much independent thinking, that's enough of a of a threat to because the Chinese Communist Party is extremely paranoid that about anything that they can't control, and they felt mm -hmm. that they couldn't control Falun well, Gong exactly. uh, practitioners. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly exactly right. You know, they want everything under their control, and now they're de developing this uh, CCTV, even in household. So wow. Yeah. So in another four years time, they they have a plan. In another four years time, they won't have a they, they they plan to have a CCTV everywhere, even you know, everywhere in inside the house inside the household. And there's also been a tension on the the Uyghur people in uh, Xinjiang province. Uh, they're basically mm -hmm. being they're Muslims. They're being put in or concentration camps, re-education camps. Now, you and I we're both uh, critical of like the influence of Islam in Australia, mm -hmm. but we don't mm -hmm. want to put them in in camps and and basically no exactly uh, that's torture, exactly torture right. them yeah. into. Uh, submission and mm -hmm. no human uh, deserves that but uh, again that they are people who uh, Chinese Communist Party believes is a threat to their power oh yeah they paranoid with everything you know so it's really bad I, I think that they they will very soon be clapped because clapped because no one can bear in that kind of a power especially now hong kong hong kongers hong kong is pe hong kong people who is going to stand like that nobody would and that power and even now trump he is very clearly you know said he doesn't want to see any persecution in hong kong anything happen hong kong happening in hong kong he 
I think he he was stepping, and even who is it? The um, other international leaders, I believe they would just they they would do something if they do really you know persecuting Hong Kongese people. I think that's why, to, to use a common uh, term, uh, yeah. the Chinese authorities have shown some form of restraint. Obviously, they, they didn't want, uh, they knew it would be bad internationally if they, they undertook yeah, it, Tiananmen yes, Square exactly. 2 with the, the world's media watching, because in, in 1989 it was just TV, print, radio, but we had one of our uh, reporters, Morgan Munro, in Hong Kong. There's been heaps of media who've independent media have gone on to Hong Kong and so everything mm. is documented and so uh, Chinese Communist Party has to be a bit more careful. Oh, you know what? Uh, CIA would have all this information. So, I mean, I believe one day they will just use the all this. This data is gradually coming out now. So, gradually, I think they will release more information to if if the CCP getting getting too bad, they would just use all the data they have to, you know, to expose CCP, and Chinese people wouldn't want to take that. Now the the Hong Kong pro democracy protests they were triggered by a extradition bill proposed by the the chief executive of what is called the Special Administrative Region of Hong Kong. Well, I think this is not proposed by them, it's proposed by CCP. They just have to follow what CCP yes. says. <laughs> uh, Carrie, yeah, Carrie Lam has exactly. said, it's, it, the, uh, all this has been my call. That's she said, you know, I, I'm the chief executive of Hong Kong people. She's tried to maintain that. Exactly, and I believe in that. In her position, is extremely difficult. So, so she she privately she has expressed to you know some couple of business people if she could, she want to quit, and she would like to give a deep apologies to whole Hong Kongese people, whole Hong Kongers. That's what she said privately, but publicly, she can't. She has to follow. So you actually believe she does want to do the, the right thing, Carrie Lam, but there's just so exactly. much pressure on her? Exactly. And even her life is in danger. Yeah, that's certainly a, a different, I, I guess, more humane portrait of her because she's yeah. basically been cast as the, the villain in this. And first, uh, uh, she said she was delaying the bill, but after 13 weeks of, of protests and Although the the, uh, the police were very restrained, there was increasing uh, brutality with uh, very public uh, arrests, physical uh, arrests of just protesters and some of the, the leaders. And everyone's wondering now, is there going to be a secret purge now that the, the bill has been killed? Yeah. So now they're, try they're killing people like it by make it like they're suicide, you know, like a, a lot mm -hmm. of her what happened in in USA you know what happened <laughs> yeah. about Clinton I think that that's what they're going to do now so Hong Kong has to be very careful you know the the Hong Kong protesters they've they've been pretty audacious with their demands obviously the complete withdrawal of the the ex, extradition bill that was one of their five demands but the other demands they've got is retraction of the the riot uh, characterization of their their protests release and exoneration of arrested protesters, establishment of independent commission into police yeah. conduct, and also the resignation of Carrie Lam and imp uh, implementation of universal uh, suffrage. Obviously, you know, those, those demands are, are, are very noble and they're, they're right, but I feel they're never going to be uh, fulfilled. No, exactly. And that Hong Konger wouldn't stop pursuing it. And that's where that's where the international power will come in. And that's why I, I very believe so that the CCP is going to clip very soon. The more bad thing that they do, you know, it just fasten the speed they clip for them to collapse. <laughs> 
And have you noticed now Trump is more, you know, in trade war? Anything happen in Hong Kong or in China, Trump is more stand firm in their trade war. Have you noticed that? Yes, because uh, now yeah. that the Chinese, they're, they're back at the table now. Uh, Everyone exactly. was expecting a big showdown at the the G7, but uh, what well, Chinese they communicate through their foreign ministry said yes, we're willing to to work this out, which was sort of a change to uh, some of their uh, quite a alarming and uh, mm -hmm. uh, angry language. Yeah, <laughs> it's good that like, Trump can make them angry. <laughs> you know. Well, they are getting. Uh, Chinese Communist Party more uh, unhinged and we've noticed that uh, in Australia uh, because obviously uh, Chinese Communist Party has tr been trying to, to influence our uh, political uh, process and our foreign uh, policy but uh, they've gotten increasingly uh, more uh, firm uh, with the, the Australian government they've ramped up the rhetoric they basically threatened the Australian government that if they were to potentially host uh, US missiles uh, in Australia, which they believe were directed at China, then it wouldn't be in everyone's uh, interest. And of course, uh, when uh, Liberal backbetcher Andrew Hastie published his uh, op-ed uh, talking about the threat of China and how we need to properly understand who we're dealing with, the, uh, the Chinese government responded very quickly to say he had a Cold War mentality and that uh, uh, the, the peaceful rise of, of China is going to benefit us all, which was an extremely Orwellian uh, response for, for, for them to say. And of course, the Chinese ambassador to Australia has basically said to our government, don't get involved in the Hong Kong situation, stay out but, of it. But do you think it, they'll work? <laughs> Do you think the theoretical would work? I was, I just think they are exposing themselves. And while they're saying things more like that, people get more, you know, people more, hang on a sec, who am I dealing with now? <laughs> you know what I mean? Before they probably think, oh, Chinese Communist Party, they're, they're good people, they're, you know, they oh, it doesn't matter anyway. So it doesn't matter what they are um, treating uh, Chinese people. As long as we get their business, though, that's all we want. But now, hang on a sec. When you talk to me like that, I have to defend my country, my people. Don't you think? The more they threat, I, don't, yeah. I just don't think that the work. <laughs> really, they they just stupid. Yeah, you would hope so. That if yeah. a, a foreign government directly threatens uh, your nation, you'd expect your government to respond. But the Australian government has been very uh, wishy washy with uh, uh, in their response to it. They haven't taken the side of the the, the pro democracy uh, protesters. There's been obviously uh, Andrew Hasty is just a, a a backbencher, but he really launched this this conversation about the threat that the Chinese uh, Communist Party poses. He has been joined yeah. by other liberal backbenchers, Tim Wilson, James Patterson, Amanda Stoker, and Dave Sharma. They they were yeah. focused on our university system because there's so many Chinese students there now, and obviously. Even though they're they're, they're in Australia, they they can still be influenced by the Chinese government. And then there's all these Confucius uh, centres set up at no, uh, universities it, yes. around yeah. Australia. And the uh, real flashpoint was the the University of Queensland, where there was mm. a protest event against their Confucius centre, basically because uh, the previous week a group of uh, Hong Kong activists they were. Uh, they were demonstrating at the university and all of a sudden pro Chinese Communist Party yeah. uh, supporters came and basically started punching them. You know what, I, um, when I was teaching at one of the high school in uh, Gold Coast, uh, I, I had a, a short contract there because one of the Chinese teacher is, uh, is away on maternity leave. So I, I took a very short contract there. And they have a one Chinese Chinese teacher from Menon uh, who, who is uh, also one of the coordinators of their of the, uh, Confucius in institution. And she told me, have to listen to the party. <laughs> I said, what? So which party in Australia we have to listen? You know, I'm a teacher. I, 
I don't have to be told to to listen to Chinese Communist Party. I'm a school teacher. If I listen to the Chinese Communist Party, I, I would have to use the propaganda on my students, which is Australian students. So that's not right. You know no. what I mean? Yeah, you're an Australian, and if you're teaching at an Australian university,、uh, you shouldn't be acting on behalf of a, a foreign government. And, and the the thing is, they're not only in university; they're also in in the、um, mi, uh, high school and primary school. They also have a、uh, Confucius institution yes, that's been program. Yes, exposed recently. Exactly, not not just in university. They they trying to brainwash. The kids are from young, like a, like a, you know, like the left le wings. They want to do this、uh, LGBT program. They brainwashing the kids from 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 kindergarten, from preschool. You know, they they have their own agenda. And we've seen with the there's been pro、uh, Hong Kong democracy、uh, demonstrations in Australia, but they've always、uh, a lot of them have been able to be countered by this sudden influx of. Pro、uh, Chinese Communist Party supporters and a lot of Hong Kong activists are covering their、uh, their face. And I'm not sure if you've been watching、uh, Avi Yemeni's yes, videos. Yes, I do. Yes, yes.、Uh, he's uh, yeah. been at the Melbourne ones, and it's it was quite concerning watching them.、Uh, he was interviewing the the pro Chinese Communist Party activists or protesters, and they were like they're in Australia. They were really forceful that Hong Kong belongs to China.、Uh, you know this it. It's one China, and you know we love our country. And they just seemed like they were completely like they didn't look standard brainwashed, but like they were like really hardcore. That you know they're yelling at Avi Yemeni that this is how China is, and that's scary. Yeah, exactly. And now they're washing brainwashing our our kids as well. You know, I when I take that short country, they say, oh, is it Taiwan belong to Hong Kong?、Uh, belong to China? I say, no, of course not. And 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 the students say, but 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 our teachers say yes, Taiwan belong to China. You know, they have this kind of propaganda. They want to brain brainwashing our kids, the kids in the world. Now they have a Con Confucius institution around the world. So that's how they're doing. They brainwashing our kids. Yeah, yeah, and it seems to be working. And I know that there's. I've heard stories that、uh, the Chinese authorities in Australia they provide assistance for Chinese people in Australia to attend these、uh, demonstrations. It's been exposed on on four corners that、uh, a lot of these pro-China、uh, demonstrations they're they're arranged、uh, by the Chinese authorities. Exactly, they they they're being paid. In other words, they 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 all being paid because Chinese people they wouldn't. Just go do do things like a protesting without paying. They think everything they do, they should be paid. That's that's how they. That's why they don't. They can't believe there's so many people go go onto street just by voluntary. They don't believe on that. I suppose you can't blame too many of them who you know might be young students for accepting money to basically hold up a a sign, but ultimately you. You would hope that they'd be more principled than that, but that's probably the same with a lot of young people today. They're just they're just、mm -hmm. not that engaged enough that they stand for for principle. Someone says, "I'll pay you fifty bucks to to be here" or something like that. They'll do it. Oh, more than fifty bucks, I I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it seems to to、uh, to be and like we, we criticise the the ABC in Australia a lot for some of their journalism, but they've done a a lot of really good reports on their Four Corners program on、uh, Chinese influence、uh, in Australia. Yeah,、um, I, I I think of a Four Corner has done their very good job because you know what? Because they're, they're after they exposing the.、Uh, in, Uh, CCP in foreign influence in Australia. Now, the world, the in, in, you know, country around the around the world started thinking, yes, that's what happened in their country as well. So once one country stand up to against that influence, 
there will be more country involved, and especially Trump. Whatever Trump wants to do, he will do it well, and he will, you know, that's why we we need a, someone like a Trump in, in Australia as well. Well, the first uh, politician to have their, their downfall at the hands of Chinese Communist Party influence was uh, former Labor Senator Sam Dastyari, because yeah. uh, during the, the 2016 election, he was uh, revealed to hold a press conference for only Chinese state media saying that uh, we support Chinese uh, sovereignty over the South China Sea, contradicting labor policy at the time. And he was very keen to get a lot of money from this uh, Chinese businessman who's been uh, banned from Australia, um, Hung Jang. Uh, Jangimo, who's well, he's been in the news again lately, and uh, what forced him to resign at the end is that he tipped off mm. Hung that uh, their phones were being bugged by Asia, our domestic intelligence agency, and that they should go outside to talk. And well, a lot of people uh, saw wh what he did as as treasonous, and he was nicknamed Shanghai Sam. And mm. obviously, that was he. He was just the first one who was sloppy enough to, to, to be exposed, but it certainly opened up a, a wider suspicion of how intertwined are our politicians with, well, Chinese business community is often, like, uh, is also controlled by a Chinese Communist Party. I mean, uh, oh, communist yes. and, and business, uh, obviously, uh, are not mutually exclusive these days. Exactly. Even they're using the, uh, 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 Taiwanese people as well, or Taiwanese people who... Um you know, who love monies, they would just buy them and do, do you know, getting information from these people. Even that, they, they do all different things. They have their spies everywhere. As I mentioned, Dastyari has been in the, the news again because the New South Wales Labor Party uh, was exposed in receiving an illegal $100,000 cash donation in the Aldi yes. bag from uh, Hung Jangimo. And a lot of it was coordinated by uh, this former Labor MP, Ernst Wong. And mm. I actually looked him up and he's actually not from Chinese mainland. He's from Hong Kong, yet he seems to be allegedly, I should say, associating with uh, China, Chinese Communist Party linked uh, businesses. Now, he uh, testified before ICAC that Hung was acting as a courier, uh, uh, saying that the $100,000 had come from a, a Chinese fundraising uh, dinner. But uh, the reason why it's before ICAC is because the, the Labor Party and the State Secretary, Kayla Minane, has, fall, has, has been suspended because they, they basically laundered the $100,000 donation through this fundraising dinner and mm -hmm. applied the donations to all these individual Chinese uh, people on the electoral roll. Yes, that's exactly right. And Australian people still kept voting them in. <laughs> what are you going to do? Mm. Well, <laughs> thankfully, New South Wales Labor uh, didn't uh, win the, the, the state election earlier this year in March, because, well, you can imagine what the government would be like now. Yeah, well, it's true, yeah. But they, not just the Labour, even, I mean, Liberal, they still have a, you know, they still buy, they still buy them. Not, yes. It doesn't matter what party, people who, who has power, they, they would just, they buy people who has power in Australia. Yes, because it, it's been revealed by, again, the ABC recently, because there was much focus that the electorate of uh, Chisholm in inner Melbourne, it's actually close to where our studio is, that was a uh, all uh, Chinese contest. Uh, the Liberal candidate Gladys Liu was a Chinese Australian, mm. and so was the, the, the Labour candidate Jennifer Yang. So... Mm -hmm. uh, much was made that uh, whoever uh, won or which party won, they'd have the first uh, Chinese Australian MP in the lower house. And Scott Morrison was very uh, eager to be seen with Gladys Liu when uh, held up her hand during a, her maiden speech. But then it was revealed that uh, both Gladys Liu and Jennifer Yang, they were, were members of, or in fact, uh, honorary chairs of the United Chinese Commerce Association of Australia, which is linked to the World Trade United Foundation, which is linked to the Chinese United Front. And it was very hard to follow this article, just all the interlinks and in that, which shows just the, the level of influence that the Chinese Communist Party seeks to do in Australia. But it sort of appeared like this 
seat, Chizza, and had basically the Chinese Communist Party had, had sort of thought they could buy it during the election, and we basically had a, one of our one of our seats basically becoming a a contest between two factions of the Chinese Communist Party. Exactly. If you think about they even buying students to do their propaganda, why wouldn't they buy people with power? You know what I mean? They even buy students. Yes, I mean they'd want to get <laughs> uh, as much influence as they can in Parliament. Now, Gladys mm -hmm. Liu, she was uh, she was the winner uh, of Chisholm for the Liberal Party. She's claimed that her association with these groups was a long time ago. She's not under their their influence anymore. Do you do you believe that? No, of course not. <laughs> Who would believe that? Every everyone, every single even businessman in overseas or you know in china they're all controlled by ccp and also in that abc article it named the victorian liberal mlc bruce atkinson who uh, was the speaker of it or should i say president of the, the legislative council for uh, for a number of years he ha had made many trips to china as part of this commerce association and yeah. i've actually heard from some of my friends in the liberal party that a lot of the even the lower party members are, are, are enticed into taking studies trips to china which seem all innocent but they're they're, they're aimed to propagandize that look how advanced uh, modern china is you know you want to do trade with us basically not not uh, making trying to make you an agent without you actively knowing Exactly. Now, I, I think it, they, for all the Chinese students who are going to overseas, they would just interview them before they go to overseas. They will ask them to do whatever they want. So, and even, even one of the Confucius is, um, how do you say, you know, they, in school, they, they're not just have a teacher, they have these are uh, student teacher something like what do you what do we call in australia called student teacher even they using them as a as a spies and one of the student teacher i say oh she has been offered to buy a house here to use her name to buy a house in australia so they they actually pay her the money for her to buy a house in australia wow exactly that's a very big investment, it seems. Yeah, they use their name, you know, to buy houses in Australia. So, you know, I mean, and now they're giving them, the Australian government, government give them 10 years of visa so they can travel to Australia, they can buy houses here, they can study here, they can do, they just like are Australian. Now, you mentioned that uh, you're a great admirer of, of Trump and uh, him engaging in this, uh, what, what's termed, trade war with uh, China. And uh, it seems that the, the reason why the Australian government has been so timid in uh, backing the, the pro-democracy protesters in Hong Kong is because basically they believe that our economic future depends on China, that if China withhold goods or other forms of labor, then that would basically destroy the Australian economy. And of course, over the years, there's been a lot of Chinese uh, buy up of our farmlands, and then bizarrely, even the, the Northern Territory government sold mm -hmm. uh, the port of Darwin uh, yeah. to uh, China. And so, probably Australia's economic intertwinement uh, with China is 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 a lot more advanced than uh, the united states uh, but it all goes back to that australia always had a, a neutral policy towards china this was back uh, when john howard was prime minister while the u.s being the global power that it is has always seen uh, china as a threat uh, to uh, stability in the pacific well really we you know i i, I remember Morrison has said one word. He says Australian people have to get used to the trade war. Have you have you seen the report? No, no, I haven't heard anyone in Australia saying that. Oh, no, 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 Morrison, Scott Morrison. He says that we just have to get used to the trade war. We have no choice. We have to stand with the USA. So you think that 
obviously Scott Morrison said that because we're still a US ally, but if, if Trump is willing to make the sacrifice, economic sacrifice for the American people, do you think Scott Morrison should be prepared to, to do the same for Australia's economy and people? Well, Trump would have to, I believe he would do something to look after Australia as well. While doing trade war, he has to be very careful to look after the international other oh, uh, USA ally as well. But of course, the tariff that's a uh, is trillion, you know, it's a lot of money there involved. So I mean, he can have some sort of other do from somewhere else to compensate our Australia's lose. I'm, I'm sure he will do that. And obviously, uh, China is trying to increase its influence in the, the Asia Pacific region. Obviously, the the build up of islands in the South China Sea, uh, try, uh, trying to control that uh, important uh, shipping route, and also they're in the Pacific Islands. And it was exposed at the uh, Pacific Islands Forum recently over the uh, Australia needed to do more on climate change in the. Pacific region, uh, mm. that's basically because China is basically is buying uh, these uh, small uh, nations there and uh, basically them attacking Australia is of benefit to, to China, even though, of course, China keeps polluting. Well, yes, but if you look at Vietnam, even that Vietnam is a communist a country, but they're very, very against of China. You yes, which is good. Yes, which is good. So I mean, it's not everybody in Pacific region listen to them. And Indonesian, they is very against China as well. So I just wouldn't think China could do much more than what they're doing now, really. And because USA is stand very firm with them, you know, Anything they do to, like now they're selling, they sold more weapons to Taiwan. You, you heard that, right? The USA, sold, yes. Yes. So now they, and they have a very good tie, uh, USA have a very good tie with Japan as well. So, I mean, they can't really get much. If they, they want to do more, the, the international power will just get in and to stop them. I really wouldn't worry about what they do in Pacific region because the more they, the more they show they're greedy, the more interference from international will, you know, to show their will defending more. I just don't think they can do anything more than that. Well, it's because they don't have many allies worldwide and it's just easy to basically buy uh, nations votes at the United Nations or whatever, because it's not just uh, Pacific Islands, but they've also well, basically engaging in a, a, a colonialization of African nations, uh, mainly to get the, the resources. But there's a lot of Chinese investment is the polite way to put it, but it's it's bad influence. Yeah, they think of buying. They, they, they don't want war. They want to use money as a as weapon. So they, they're using and even even themselves. They're owing a lot of they have a lot of debt as well. You know, they just uh, printing money to do this uh, one by one road. They are, this is just a scam, really. They don't have a, that much money to spend on it. It's just a scam, purely just a scam, but people fall into it. Yeah, I'm glad you, you mentioned that because obviously uh, China's promoting this. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make trade routes, make sure that uh, we can trade as much as possible. But it's all about having trade on China's terms, uh, obviously only through channels we have approved of. Exactly. And people falling into their trap, you know, many, many countries. But now, now they start to wake up. But I, I still think, you know, the more ambitious they have to the wor world, the people will, will, will work up. I think there's more people now 
waking up than like two years ago. You know, people understand better. You know, like a Hong Kong protest, that waking up more people, people can see what they're doing now. So the more bad thing they do, the more people waking up. So I just think that's, in 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 another word, it's a good thing for them to do a bad thing. You know what I mean? Yes, they certainly are making a lot of mistakes lately. Exactly. And, uh, it's uh, having no, the... they, they they just not, they're making mistakes, all all in the more than sixty year regime. There's no one good thing they did. <laughs> no, they, <laughs> they're trying. So you know, well, but they they now more they're showing more and more what they want. You know. And I, th I think now, uh, be because they are becoming increasingly threatening, it's making the ordinary Australian wake up to exactly. the, the threat of... Because Australians, they've always been suspicious of uh, multiculturalism and Australia's identity changing, but now they're seeing with, with Chinese immigration that there's an additional threat uh, to it, and, and that is that our actual policies and liberties uh, can be eroded. I think globalization is more theoretical than multiculturalism. They're using globalization to buy their property here in Australia, you know, and to come to here to, they, they can set up business here, they can, you know, they, they, they can just do everything like uh, Australian people do. And they, they take our market and then they take it back to their country. So I think globalization is is more theoretical than more theoret than uh, multiculturalism. Potentially, uh, certainly, when you have a a nation which is not a free market capitalist nation and it's not yeah. a private uh, corporation uh, which is uh, buying things but a state-owned enterprise, then that's not real globalization. No, but they're using it. They're using globalization to to invade other countries that's what they're using yes well certainly using the cover of it uh, now obviously i've talked about how the chinese communist party is trying to compromise our political system but mm. certainly a uh, one government agency which is sort of making sure that the the threat is is seen single-handedly is asio australia's security and intelligence organization and they for a number of years have been warning politicians you know be careful of these chinese businessmen and other community leaders because they're, they're trying to, to influence our our politics and it was quite interesting that uh, the outgoing asio boss uh, duncan lewis yeah. basically said that we see it as our duty to alert the public to the threat of foreign interference and, and influence. It, it sort of seemed to me that he's sort of saying if our politicians are inept, then, you know, we as a security agency will, will pick up, pick up the, the slack here. Now, you know, they're just using everybody. Yeah, they buy politicians. So that's, that try to, if they can buy politicians, they can buy, they can buy the country. That's what they want to do. And they're brainwashing our kids. So everything is in, under their control. That's what they want. Well, obviously, as as we've established, it's it's getting a bit more more difficult for the the ordinary person to to just swallow and accept. I think Australian people are too kind, and they don't know how evil that CCP is. So you know, they're very naive. They think, oh they can provide economic benefit for, for Australia. Why not? Because everybody need to eat. Everybody need to survive. Everybody, you know. But they don't think they have this uh, propaganda in there. They want your country. They not just want to invest. They want to own your country. They want to control our people. People don't, can't see that. And it's not for the people of China's benefit, it's for their, their own power. I mean, exactly. like, obviously, they, they want to keep the, the people of China 
satisfied to a degree, but no, they don't care about their welfare, just that they're well enough to not rebel against the government. And then the more power the CCP have in the world, the Chinese people say, look, our, our government is so strong. What's wrong with our government? You know what I mean? So they were more more obeying their government and they would think they, they would just, you know, and I have so many Chinese people say to me, oh, Australia is a China, China promise, one of the promises of China. So they're proud of the CCP, what they do, what, you know, in, in the world. They are pr proud of the government, uh, you know, the, the one bell, one role project. So I don't know. Well, we're doing our best to, to lay it all out on, on shows uh, such as this. There's other great independent media such as uh, YouTuber Dave Lee setting out what China's really up to. Now, I want to turn back uh, to uh, Taiwan, where, where you're from. You've said you identify as Taiwanese, not uh, Chinese, though the nation mm -hmm. is officially called the Republic of of China, and that's because the Nationalist Party that ruled China since it became a republic it tr retreated there before the Chinese Communist Party seized power in mainland China in 1949. Now, although it was a originally a military dictatorship, Taiwan is now a democracy, and thanks to economic reforms, it's referred to as one of the, the, the Asian economic miracles and has first world uh, living standards. But yes, but let me let me remind you this what do can you tell me who won World War Two? The Allies won World War Two. And US is the the lead, isn't it? Yes. And uh, okay. the, the government at the time was the, the nationalist uh Kuomintang. Exactly. Now before World War Two, Taiwan was a, a colonial country of Japan for more than fifty years. When the, the World War II, the USA or the airline won the war, and then uh, Japan went back to Japan from Taiwan, right? And then in that the same time, the KMT lose their power to CCP. Taiwan is not even in Chinese geography. It's Taiwan, an island, a series of it's islands. It's an island. So China never owned Taiwan. That's just because KMT lose the power to CCP. So US led uh, KMT to escape to Taiwan and to in charge Taiwan. But at the same time, uh, US has these uh, Taiwan relation regulation or what, uh, how, what do you call it? Diplomatic. Yes. They still have these uh, regulations about Taiwan to control, they still have their power on Taiwan. So for me, for many Taiwanese people, they think Taiwan's belong to US and KMT just there temporarily there, the temporary, temporary uh, government in Taiwan. They don't, Republic of China don't even exist because Republic of China is not even in the UN. Well, it was uh, after the, the Chinese Communist Party took control in 1949, the Republic of China was recognized as the official China until 1973, when well, yeah, that's right. Nixon and uh, Gough Whitlam visited uh, China. And as I mentioned, the the Chinese Communist Party has a one China policy, and they, they still consider Taiwan to be part of China, and so there's there's this uh, tension that is still simmering and and could flare up at at any moment between Taiwan and People's Republic of China. They own Republic Republic of China, but Republic of China doesn't own Taiwan. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes, I get what you mean. Yeah, the Taiwan never belonged to China. But it's not stopping them trying to claim it. No, uh, and yeah. they even think they even think that U.S. belong to China as well. They, th they think they their ancestor found found U.S. so <laughs> U.S. belong to China. And recently, there's a one uh, language researcher say, "Oh, English, French, German, and Korean, Japanese, they are all dialect of China." China. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. They think they own the world. 
I've never heard that before, but that. Oh, yeah. I, I can send you the the news link. Oh yeah, pl link. please do, because that's hilarious. <laughs> Other uh, thing, Chinese are report you won't be able to read it. Hmm. People's Republic of China have said uh, because there is, uh, and I assume you support this, the the Taiwanese independence movement, which wants to have the Republic of China be the Republic of Taiwan. But uh, Republic of China have said if that happens then we would take action to seize Taiwan. Yeah, PRC, People's Republic of China, yes. Republic of China is the, the KMT government called Republic of China. But People's Republic of China is the CCP. Yes. Yeah, so it's PRC. But I mean, do you think the uh, US will sit in there and let them do that? <laughs> well, no, they, they wouldn't. No. But a lot of people don't want a, a war uh, with mainland China, Chinese exactly. Communist Party. That's why Trump is using this trade war. I think it, the trade war d destroys CCP. So what do you think is going to be the, the end fate for Taiwan? Because it's surviving sort of at the, the mercy of the, the People's Republic of China, the the Chinese Communist Party, can Taiwan be properly I think, independent? Uh, I think Taiwanese people like to be 51st state of the USA. Would you actually like that? Oh yeah, many people, many people agree with that. They don't want ROC. They want to, they want to change the country name to ROT, Republic of Taiwan. But it doesn't look like it's possible anyway. So if that's the case, I mean, Taiwanese people like Taiwan to become 51st state of the, of the US. And then then just work out from there if if they can set up as a... But first, firstly, they have to be under US management. Otherwise, they, they would never be able to be independent. You hope that the USA doesn't do what the, the British uh, did to Hong Kong because after it gave Hong Kong back to the Chinese in 1997, it only guaranteed uh, democracy and civil liberties in Hong Kong for 50 years until 2047 under the uh, one government, two systems. So we have the, the situation in Hong Kong, the, the can being kicked down the road and the day of reckoning to come. and obviously the the status of of taiwan that's that's another situation that that could flare up like we've seen with hong kong recently so there still is a lot to sort of be uh concerned about exactly but i just never think the ccp will take over this hong kong and taiwan it would never be possible well, I certainly admire your uh, resilience and obviously your mm. bravery in in speaking out. And I'm glad I was able to have you back on the show today to inform yeah. our audience about uh, your experience and, and expertise. And, and yeah, make, make sure that uh, wherever you go uh, in Australia, you keep telling people the, the truth and, and waking them up about the Chinese Communist Party. Oh, exactly. And... and Yes, even I had a contact, you know, I, I, I had a, some kind of, I've been talking to uh, Four Corners. I'm mean, really glad that what they do today. And yeah, I, I think I do have a little bit contribution in this part. Oh, well, all the best and we'll speak again <laughs> soon. Thank you. Bye. And that's the show for today. I would like to now share with you a very big announcement regarding the future of this show. This will be the second last episode of The Unshackled Waves. Beginning on Sunday the 15th of September, I'll be launching a brand new fast-paced live and information show called Wilmsfront. It will be broadcast Sunday, Wednesday and Friday nights Melbourne time on my own personal YouTube channel and of course will be available on replay after on rationalrise.tv and on your preferred podcasting platform. So it's very exciting exciting that we're moving into the the next phase of the unshackled project because as you know news breaks so quickly and the news cycle can change dramatically in less than 24 hours waves most of the time is pre-recorded and tends to focus on a single issue or three or four at most 
So by the time a new episode is edited and released, the news cycle has already changed. So with a live show aimed at being fast paced, bringing you all the relevant news happening around the globe right away and offering immediate analysis, we bring to, hope to bring you with the Unshackled a more comprehensive uh, summary of what is happening in our world. It is another further step in our, in our production schedule this year. My colleague Steel Archer now has his own show, Debt Nation. There has also been The Uncuckables, our joint production with the XYZ and The Rational Rise, live every Thursday night, 8.30pm Melbourne time on its dedicated YouTube channel, now with its own website, theuncuckables.com. And on Tuesday evening, we launch Trans Tasman Talk, another joint production between us and our New Zealand counterpart, rightminds.nz. It is hosted by myself and Right Minds editor, Due De Boer. The aim of the show is to inform our respective audiences about the similar and different battles we are facing as anglo spear nations of the South Pacific. It is live on both the Unshackled and Right Minds YouTube channel every Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. Melbourne time. So if you're following all that, I'll be uh, broadcasting live five nights a week, so pretty much uh, full time, three nights a week on my own Wilmsfront show, and then of course uh, once a week with the Uncuckables on Thursday and now Trans Tasman Talk on Tuesdays. We are also doing our bit to fight the social media deplatforming and censorship. James Fox Higgins, as I've mentioned before, has launched Rational Rise. TV, which is a self-hosted video site which intends to be the new home of alt media content in Australia. It will host a Rational Rise, XYZ, Unshackled and other exclusive content, so make sure you check it out and take out a subscription. We also encourage you to use duckduckgo.com for your search needs and also Infogalactic for your information and encyclopedic knowledge. There is also free speech social media, which The Unshackled continues to grow on. We're on gab.com slash The Unshackled. We're also on minds.com slash The underscore Unshackled. We are at mewe.com slash P slash The Unshackled. We also have our growing Telegram channel on the popular encrypted messaging service at t.me slash The Unshackled. Remember that we still cannot continue to expand and bring you all this extra content without your financial support. Uh, so please uh, consider supporting us on patreon.com slash the unshackled or paypal.me slash the unshackled. There is also our premium membership option on our website, theunshackled.net slash membership and our web donation form at theunshackled.net slash donate. We are also on subscribestar.com slash the unshackled and we also have our online merchandise store featuring our most popular products at theunshackled.net slash store. So thanks once again for your company and we'll see you for the final farewell show at the end of the week. Thanks for tuning in to The Unshackled Waves. Please visit theunshackledwaves.net for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show. Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net and keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.